There's no way I can accurately describe how much I enjoy flying aerobatics. Today we're going to do a video to help you see just how easy it is to transition into a whole new type of flying that will really increase your enjoyment of this sport. Hi, I'm Michael Wargo with Precision Aerobatics. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to help you transition into aerobatic flying. There's a great deal of pilots who are flying their warbirds and trainers and you know you, there's a lot of trouble in learning and learning how to land and how to keep your plane under control. But now we're going to help you take it to the next level. And I believe the next level is to start learning some basic aerobatics. Precision aerobatics is all about aerobatics and we want as many pilots as possible uh, pushing their own personal envelopes and learning how to fly aerobatically a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a look at some uh, warbirds doing some basic aerobatic maneuvers. And then we're going to take our PA plane up there, which is going to be significantly easier to fly and to do aerobatics, and put it through its paces a little bit and show you just how to start doing aerobatics. As we scan the flight line here, you'll see warbirds and stick planes and biplanes. And all these planes are very capable of basic aerobatics and some even not so basic. Right here we have a, a pilot that's kind of new to aerobatics trying to uh, work some of it out and learn the way it feels with a little foamy. Definitely a great introduction to the world of uh, aerobatics. At this point I want to introduce you to my friend Tom. Tom is a big fan of precision aerobatics and he's been uh, flying for how long now? About four years. About four years. Well, the reason I have Tom here is because Tom really graduated recently through the ranks of flying warbirds and, and basic flying to expanding his, his repertoire into aerobatics and eventually trying 3D and moving right into some of the uh, precision aerobatics planes. And I just wanted him to kind of give you a little bit of feel for where he came from and why he is where he is at this point. Well going from a trainer to a warbird was a step and flying the warbirds for a while I found that I wanted to try something a little different. I went online and saw some of the PA videos, and especially with Michael flying, and I thought, wow, that looks like fun, and, and that's the main reason I fly, is for fun. PA planes, I love the way they look, and I love the way they fly. I think the ADX is probably the easiest plane to transition that there is from Warbirds to 3D. It's very floaty, very stable, very easy to fly. And it takes a lot of the fear out of flying. And that's my biggest problem is I get a little tense and I get a little fearful. But with PA planes, you don't have to do that. Uh, the planes just handle so well and, as I said, are so stable. Well, at this point, um, I want you to tell them just a little bit about what it was that actually sparked that transition into trying aerobatics. How long were you flying before you started trying? I've only been doing aerobatics or trying to do aerobatics for about a year. Um, it was just for me, I wanted to do something besides fly in the pattern. Um, I wanted to do something that I could fly and learn different orientations and, and different maneuvers and just have a lot of fun with the plane. Did you go right to an aerobatic plane or did you try aerobatics with your trainers and warbirds? Um, I tried them with the warbirds a little bit, but I could nowhere near come close to what I wanted to do. So I did buy the uh, PA planes, and the the rate of progression has been what I think pretty good for me. What we're going to be going over today is obviously the transition and how to start the, your very first aerobatic maneuvers. Um, but what Tom was saying about the PA planes being easier. We're not saying you have to immediately go out and buy an aerobatic plane, but they're designed to do that. So they go in and out of the maneuvers much easier and they're much, much, much safer. The nerves will go away if the plane behaves the way it's supposed to. Well, at this point, you are a beginner and really have not experimented with aerobatics. Okay? Uh, what I want to teach you is how to relax and stop worrying about the aerobatics. Um, I'm a little less worried because I'm flying a plane that is absolutely designed to do this. That means it executes the maneuvers very well. When you come out of it, it's very easy. 
It starts on cue, stops on cue, and tends to want to float and stay aloft, uh, unlike the warbirds, which will fight you a little bit. This is a plane that a friend of mine is letting me fly. This is a, a, a Mustang, a P-51, and you can see it's modestly aerobatic. Um, what we're going to do is show you how to just start doing aerobatics. What you would want to do is just get it nice, even flight where you know you've got the airplane. Point it up at maybe a 45 degree angle and just roll the ailerons. Don't panic, just roll it. And when it gets back to zero, you can fly out. We're going to do that again. And what I want to encourage you to do is not roll too fast. Just move the ailerons and watch so that it's going to complete the roll, but don't go too fast. Here we go. We're going to get in level flight, pull it up at a 45 degree angle, and just move the ailerons. Don't do anything else. And when it comes back out, fly steady. The next maneuver we're going to show you is one of the other very basic aerobatic maneuvers, and that's a loop. All we're going to do is fly level. We're going to pull back on the stick. Just keep pulling back, keep pulling back, keep pulling back. Take a little throttle off, keep pulling back, keep pulling back, keep pulling back, and eventually the plane will level off. Flying aerobatics. Now the big deal here is this plane is not going to do anything as well as the precision aerobatics planes because they are designed for aerobatics. Well, I have my friend, filmmaker and, and builder extraordinaire, uh, Steve King. He's the guy who's filmed almost all of my videos that you've seen. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about Steve's story because it really relates to uh, what we're talking about today. Uh, Steve is a warbird guy. He's got these big, giant, 100cc warbirds, uh, gas warbirds. He just loves this stuff. And years ago, he really started to uh, uh, foray a little bit into uh, aerobatics. And we'll let you tell him a little bit about, uh, let him tell you a little bit about his story. As Mike said, I like the warbirds. The Corsairs are my favorites. But building for Michael, building all these fun toys, and watching him play with them, I got my chance to fly some of them also. And starting with the foamies, so I didn't crash too many of them myself. Worked out great, but then he let me fly some of the PA planes. And there's been nothing but a tremendous acceleration in my performance using the PA airplanes and practicing with those, simply because my skills have gotten so much better. I feel so much more confident with my warbirds in the air after flying PA planes because those things are just so streamlined, easy to fly, and it feels, you know, like I got it right here. So it's made our progression so much better. I can't tell you enough about it because going from where I started to where I am has been because of this. Well, I can tell you that um, Steve is a really competent pilot. He does 3D and, and, and has really enjoyed aerobatics. He's not giving up his warbirds or, or jets anytime soon. But at this point, once he got the addiction in his hands, I mean, you could see his improvement in, in two weeks. He was so confident doing things and putting the plane in orientations. He would never put his warbirds in, ever. Just flying low and upside down. Wouldn't do it with the warbirds. After a week with the PA planes, it was a no-brainer. And now, of course, he's very accomplished. And uh, But right now, we're going to let Steve fly this plane. Instead of me uh, flying and Steve filming, I'm going to film, and we're going to let Steve fly a little bit and show you some of the basic aerobatic maneuvers. Simple takeoff, but for those of you who don't have a PA plane, watch how nice and beautifully this thing takes off. Smooth as can be. Now we're going to do a loop. Steve is just going to pull back on the elevator a little bit. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, and release it when he's done. And that's it. It's one simple maneuver. Just pull back on the elevator. Make sure you have enough throttle to get over the top. Now we're going to try an aileron roll. We're going to pull the plane up. Roll the plane real quick. And once again, you can see just how easy it is. Maybe, Steve, you can do another one? There you go. Beautiful. And finally, what you're going to notice is just how easy these things are to land. He's just going to cut the power, and it's going to float in just nicely. 
Beautiful, Steve. What we're going to try and do now is show you a little bit about the progression. What exactly happens and what types of maneuvers are you going to go through until you eventually become a competent pilot? Um, we're going to fast forward through a year of career, maybe longer. Um, I'm really hoping that you try some basic loops and rolls. But what they're going to progress into is going to be point rolls, um, uh, inverted loops, uh, uh, aerobatic maneuvers like Cubanates and, and uh, Immelmans and, and stall turns and things. It all comes from a few basic maneuvers that help teach you orientation. Okay, one of the other basics is going to be inverted flight. And that is going to be just get, getting comfortable with the fact that your plane is upside down. Um, inverted flight isn't that difficult. Absolutely anybody could do it. My suggestion is just do it high. That's the best suggestion uh, there is. Do everything up high until you get used to it. And that's, that was my biggest fear going from warbirds into these kind of acrobatic airplanes and just not feeling comfortable with the plane, especially at low altitudes. But from the practice and the times that I've flown these things, I've gotten so much, so much more confident. I feel like I can put my big planes anywhere, anytime. What we're talking about, the difference between the aerobatic planes and the, the planes you're probably already flying, basic sport planes and, and, and warbirds, is that if you'll notice in this inverted condition, you know, we can fly very, very slow. And if you look at the airplane, it is absolutely, absolutely rock, rock, rock solid. It is not giving me any trouble at all. And this is the beginning of 3D, is these slow, slow, slow maneuvers and Harriers. Another very basic maneuver is called a four-point roll. And all we're going to do is we're going to stop the ailerons every quarter turn. So we're going to go to a quarter turn, we're going to go to half, we're going to go to three quarters, and we're going to finish. Now that is basically an aileron roll with some slight modifications. Now these aileron rolls turn into a lot of things. They turn into some elegant maneuvers like slow rolls. It's a really beautiful maneuver to, uh, to execute when you're flying at your field. We can do point rolls with more than four points. There's an eight-point roll. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, of course, there's a Harrier roll, which is a really difficult maneuver to execute, but it's just a variation. As you can see, I'm just doing aileron rolls. But there's a lot of different controls coming into the picture here that we can teach you at some other time. There is another important skill that you're all going to have to master and start uh, using a little bit, which is the use of the rudder. Most people who fly war birds and, and are beginning pilots with trainers just don't use their rudder very much. But in 3D and aerobatic flying, your rudder is used quite a bit. And again, it's one of those things where we're going to start doing it slowly and introducing it slowly. A good starting maneuver, in my opinion, is a stall turn. You fly the plane straight up, and when it gets to the top, we're just going to kick the rudder and then fly straight down. And here's another stall turn. You go up, straight up, stop the airplane, kick the rudder, fly straight down. You can even do a roll on the way down. And you can see how the, the uh, maneuvers are combined. Good aerobatic flying is definitely a combination of maneuvers, but it all involves you just getting comfortable with doing it for that first time. If you're not uh, used to seeing the plane uh, in different orientations or rolling or looping, you're just going to have to try it, but try it up high. What you're seeing now is called a Harrier. And this plane is in a stalled configuration. This is where it's literally impossible to do with a Warbird. But the plane is stalled. And what I'm doing is using the motor to hold the plane up. And this is a very basic 3D maneuver. And again, this is much later in your evolution as a pilot, but it's definitely a very important skill. This can also be done inverted. We're gonna, now again, the other thing that's so wonderful about the PA planes is they do these things incredibly well. You can see there's no wing rock whatsoever. 
and of course, now eventually most people that end up evolving into 3D are going to want to learn to hover. And once again, these PA planes are so easy to hover. We have all kinds of maneuvers that are just combinations of these maneuvers. Um, a basic aerobatic maneuver is a Cuban 8. This is about a half a loop. And here's what it looks like. There's a half a loop and on the way down, I'm going to do half a roll. And that's the first half of our Cuban 8. Anything in closing? Well, in closing, I'd like to say, as I stated before, I like to have fun when I fly, and PA has brought the fun back in flying. It has made me a much better pilot, and I just have a ball showing off in front of my friends and, and looking at these cool airplanes and just having fun. Yeah, I just want to say too that flying this airplane has made me such a better warbird and a jet pilot because this thing has taught me the confidence I need to fly my airplanes, and it's also saved me quite a few crashes. But using these things made the world difference.